Uh, it's really, really great to see you guys here today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, parents, uh, Mayor Mike Spano, Police Commissioner Sapienza, Chief Monaco, City Council members, uh, we are honored to have you all here today to celebrate with us. Um, it's been a long road for the youth that we're gonna celebrate today, and they started this road without the promise of any accolades, any pat on the back. They just knew that they wanted to be part of something that was bigger and that was of service. Um, so they decided that they were gonna embark down this road uh, with us. <clears throat> it's always been our goal to try and create thoughtful leaders of tomorrow, um, but most importantly, thoughtful leaders of tomorrow who come right here, come from uh, this great city of Yonkers. And I, I think that's what we've been able to do. The youngsters that you are about to meet, they are, um, very, very promising, and we are excited to have been part of their journey. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the graduating class of the 2022 Yonkers Police Cadet. Ladies and gentlemen, and now I'd like to introduce you under the direction of Lieutenant Cusick, our Yonkers Police Honor Guard. Detail, carry colors. Forward, march. Left face. Present. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, parents, staff, distinguished guests. Uh, my name is Officer Bess. I'm a member of Community Affairs Division for the Yonkers Police Department. I've been an officer for about seven years now. I've also served in the U.S. Army military, as you could see, maybe a little bit. Uh, today marks the end of a six-month training course that along with my partner, Officer Hoag set forth to devise only to enhance the Yonkers Police Cadet Program, um, but also to incorporate training, discipline, and motivation to the young adults we honor today. Uh, these 13 individuals who are being recognized today were chosen for this program out of 85 applicants. Uh, as many of you know, the choice to enroll in this program was designed to give these young adult adults a glimpse into adulthood by giving them the power of responsibility. From the beginning, myself and Officer Hogue determined that the best candidates for this program would be a candidate who would take the initiative to leap over all hurdles coming their way, as well as display what is now our motto, exceeding expectations. And so, we started with the application process and made the distinct suggestion that parents not be the ones to pick up the application, but instead give these young adults the opportunity to be responsible enough to start this journey solely on their own. After carefully going through numerous applications, we were tasked within, with weeks of in-person interviews uh, so we may achieve some sort of formal meeting and grading system for acceptance into the program. From the start, physical fitness of each candidate was tested, and although some were faster than others, some were stronger than others, collectively, they all realized they were not all prepared. 
In addition to PT, the cadets have obtained a vast amount of knowledge about the many different aspects of policing, the many different positions of policing, and most of all, the importance of policing and community partnering to make the city of Yonkers a better place. Our goal as officers in this program has never been to force a relationship between ourselves as police officers with the cadet recruits you see today. We put our best foot forward to not only be instructors, but also mentors, friends, and individuals to which maybe one day will be considered family. Today, we're not only honored, but very proud of the achievements that we have made over the last six months with this class. Uh, you all showed the vast amount of interest in this program, and you've made us to this point not only with dedication, but with diligence, hard work, and respect. Moving forward, uh, the cadet recruits will uh, be certified momentarily as Yonkers Police Department Youth Cadets and will be called upon throughout the years to provide service and assistance in enhancing the community we serve in the city of Yonkers. We will continue to monitor their progress in school, in school, and we will have further relationships with you as, as, uh, as we offer our services as instructors and officers if ever you need our help. The goal is not only to prepare these young adults for volunteer work, but also to prepare them for life. So it is our commitment to guide them along the way throughout high school, as much as they will allow us in their college years, and hopefully in the near future, if they ever decide to pursue a career as a YPD officer. In closing, I say to you recruits, today may be the end of your initial training, but it's the beginning of a productive and very, very bright future, if you allow it. At this time, I'd like to introduce four members of our YPD Youth Cadet Program who've prepared a brief statement regarding their experience within the last six months of training. So please join me in welcoming Cadet Recruit Sullivan, Cadet Recruit Hernandez, Cadet Recruit St. Anne, and Cadet Recruit Daly. Cadets Post. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank you all for coming today to see us complete a journey in our young lives. It's been a long but short six months in this cadet program, but at the end, we would do it all over again. At the beginning of this program, we all probably thought, what did we get ourselves into? But once we started to experience the great opportunities and benefits in this program, we started to look forward to it. It became a part of our routine, our routine every week, and we enjoyed learning all the great aspects of becoming a Yonkers Police. When a forensics teacher at Roosevelt High School approached me about interviewing to become a youth cadet with the Yonkers Police Department, I thought it was a great idea, because I wanted to learn more about all the areas of law enforcement on my first day, I was pretty nervous about what to expect. And when Officer Bess put us through extreme boot camp, I thought this might not be for me after all. I decided to stick it out, and I'm so glad I did. The program has taught me so many things about commitment, integrity, perseverance, and teamwork. It pushed me far outside my comfort zone and helped to make me stronger both physically and mentally. I am so grateful for this opportunity and want to thank, thank the Yonkers Police Department for creating this experience. I especially want to thank Officer Bess and Officer Hogue for all their dedication and support. Lastly, I would like to tell my fellow cadets that it has been an honor and a privilege to be included in a program with them. I could not have done it otherwise. So, ever since I was a kid, I grew up with law enforcement uh, officers who told me to, if I should join the Yonkers Police Department, I said it was a good job. I told them I wouldn't mind doing it, and to this day, I'm here with the Yonkers Police um, cadet recruits um, to remind them that I'm um, the Yonkers Police Department, that I could do it the dreams that um, I managed to uh, set from my career. 
and three years ago today was my second week out of juvenile detention center as I served my time for getting in trouble with the law. And I'm here to prove the one who doubted me and said I would never be a better person and I would continue to be a criminal. My promise to my family was to give me an opportunity to show them that they never raised a criminal and I will be the better version of my past. God has sent the will in my mind that I will move forward no matter how much I suffer or how much I discipline myself, but I will continue to stand my ground and fight because I am no quitter. To end this, I want to thank my older brother for introducing me to this program and encouraged me to join. I also want to thank Instructor Best for training us mentally and physically and showing us that the only way you're a failure is if you've given up and not let the weak mindset beat you. I also want to thank Instructor Hog for pushing us to our limit when she knew that we still had more energy and strength to our physical training session. And as for the U cadets, it was an honorable six months training with you all, and I'm very proud of you guys for pushing yourself to the limit, even if we had the lack of motivation, confidence, and strength in the beginning. Well said, everyone. Now, ever since I was a kid, I've always seen myself as being a police officer before I even know what being one entailed. As I grew older and more aware of, my, of life, my passion for law enforcement only grew. With having many family friends in law enforcement, I've heard about this program called the Yonkers Police Youth Cadets. With a brief explanation of the program, I was immediately interested and was excited to sign up. When the first day of the program came, I was extremely excited while also nervous at the same time because I knew that graduating from this program would set me up for the rest of my life and give me a near certain shot into a law enforcement career. Although I was nervous at first, I did not let that stop me from doing my best in the program. As I overcame my fears, I became more confident and did my best to put myself in a leadership position where I could do better, where I could be better inspire my, and inspire my fellow cadets. I've also used this opportunity to learn about myself and grow, but more importantly, to exceed expectations as a group. I'm extremely grateful for this opportunity, and I'm glad that I can make a difference in the lives of both my own and my fellow cadets. And finally, on behalf of all the cadets present here today, we'd like to express our immense gratitude and give a big thank you to both Instructor Best and Instructor Hogue for making this opportunity possible and for giving us all a chance to prove ourselves as cadets. Take seats. Um, I'm not going to be emotional. It was super emotional for me, though, because as Instructor Best said in the beginning, we uh, interviewed more than 80 kids. And so we only have space for about 20, which makes it extremely difficult when selection time comes. Um, but as you can see, each one of these kids had their own stories, right? Like we weren't looking for perfection. We weren't looking for the smartest or the strongest. We were looking for uh, potential and desire and courage and commitment. And we found that in every single one of these cadets. So I'm super proud of you all. You guys did a great job speaking. Thank you very much. So each year we also uh, give out few awards to um, cadets who stood out amongst the group. Um, and there were many, as there always are. Um, but we give out five different awards. And uh, the first I'm going to discuss is the Academic Achievement Award. Um, as most of us in this room know, as adults, it's extremely difficult multitasking. Doing multiple things and being good at it all is nearly impossible. Something's going to suffer. Um, so we, during the initial intake process, we let the cadets know you are expected to keep a GPA of a B, which is about a 3.0 at 80 average. Um, I'm proud to say that our group this session thus far, it's only been the first marking period, but we are averaging about an 82% as a group. In that, in that group, there are two cadets who are averaging an 80, a 98% overall and a 97% overall. Those cadets, first with a 98% from Roosevelt High School is Alexandria Daly. Please stand. <laughs> yeah. 
We are so proud of you, Alexandria. Stay standing. Um, we are so proud of you, Alexandria, and we thank you for your commitment to academic excellence. It is extremely important. In addition to her award for academics, Alexandria is also receiving one of our Resilience Awards. The reason for this is that Alexandria, being an athlete, hurt herself very early on in the program, and she was limited in what she could do. However, she showed up every single day doing push-ups with one arm, sit-ups with one arm, running with a cask, angry at the doctor, not clearing her to do full workouts. We are honored to have had you, Alexandria. Thank you. Yeah. Next, from the Charter School of Excellence, Maximilio Martinez, please stand. Maximilio started out as one of our more reserved cadets, very, very quiet, not speaking very much. We worked on that a lot. Max finished his first quarter with a 97%. We are honored to have had you. Our next Resilience Award goes to Haji Maboub. Please stand, Haji. Haji also entered our program a bit shy, um, also dealing with some asthma issues. He would struggle a lot during our runs and a lot of our physical fitness activities. However, he showed up every single day and put his best foot forward, often at times causing us to tell him, you have to sit down now. Like, please just sit down. We know you're trying. Um, we appreciate your effort and your hard work, and it did not go unnoticed, Haji. Congratulations. <laughs> Our last Resilience Award goes to Itzel Torres from Barack Obama. <laughs> Itzel also showed up to the program uh, a bit shy and experienced some issues interacting socially in big crowds, which I do too. Um, she fought against it and she has turned into one of our stellar cadets. We are honored to have had you. We appreciate your effort, Itzel. <clears throat> This next award uh, is our Physical Fitness Award. So this award is, is uh, awarded to the cadet each year who not is in the best shape, but ends up being in the best shape. So you could have come into the program and not been in great shape, but you showed up every day and worked very, very hard. You finished the program in the best shape. Uh, this particular cadet, oftentimes would stay afterwards. I'd be in the gym with my basketball team training. He'd ask if he can stay and run with them. Um, he was really committed to his fitness. He went above and beyond every single day in many, many ways, even more than physical. Um, but this year, Kevin Hernandez from Lincoln High School. Please stand. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work, Kevin. You see that. Our leadership award this year this goes to uh, the cadet who showed themselves from the very, very beginning, open and willing to be a leader and uh, take on the responsibility of guiding their peers. Um, he's done it from the day that we met him. He does it still. I, I will not be surprised if I'm surprised if we're calling him colleague in a year or so. He is committed um, to the idea of public service, law enforcement in particular, and all the good things that come with that. This year, that award goes to, from from Iona Prep, Joseph Sullivan. Thank you, Joseph. And lastly, um, we have an award. It is uh, new to us, but uh, Instructor Bess and myself, we decided that it was necessary. Um, during the year, we have a very strict policy regarding what you should and should not do in school in order to be seen as a cadet that is in good standing. Um, it is just what it is. This year we had one of our cadets who found himself in a compromising position, no fault of his own. Um, I go to the schools often to check in as to what they're doing. He came to us. He came to us long before I found out. He told us he was very, very upset. But the amount of integrity and character connected to that, we wouldn't have found out. It was so close to the end. And he came and told us. Um, and we just want you to know that we respect you. And if you continue to operate with that level of integrity, life has many things in your future. This Integrity Award goes to Gene Valdez from Riverside High School.
And that concludes our awards for this year's class. All of the recipients, we are extremely proud of you and thank you for honoring our motto and exceeding the expectation. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our very own Police Commissioner, Commissioner Sapienza. Thank you and good afternoon. When I think back to my own childhood, I think about going to St. Paul's as a kid and we had a lot of discipline. And I remember the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts and there was, uh, it was a place where you learned citizenship as well as discipline and leadership. And then later on I joined the Marine Corps and I got a crash course in discipline and leadership. And when I see these cadets coming in here today being as squared away as they are and as motivated as they are, uh, it warms my heart. I think this is great stuff. I think this is a great, worthwhile program. Uh, thank you to Officers Hogue and Bess, and thank you to Captain Ward. Thank you to Chief Monaco for facilitating this. I would also like to thank the Mayor and the City Council uh, for supporting this program. It's very worthwhile. When we think about recruitment at YPD, the one thing we think about is how do you tap someone on the shoulder and say, hey, this is a really good job. This is a chance you know, for, for you to do something great. And this is exactly what this program is doing. You're giving an opportunity to give a small idea of what this job is like. You got to see a, a bunch of different things on this job, whether it be canine, uh, ESU, all, all the different things that we do here. And it gave you a taste of it. And selfishly, I hope that some or all of you will become police officers, but if not, I hope you walk away with these life skills and I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Um, I, I believe our, our chief is gonna say a few words as well. Is that correct, Chief Monaco? Um, I'm Deputy Chief Joseph Monaco. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't have anything prepared, but what I, what I do want to say is we hear a lot about Captain Ward, about myself, the police commissioner, the mayor. These two officers right here, this who, this, these two officers instituted this program, very little supervision. Officer Bess and Officer Hogue, they deserve the credit for bringing your, the cadet program to fruition and, and helping these, these young, young men and women become the best people that they can be and hopefully, like the commissioner said, future Yonkers police officers. Um, one thing I, I do want to add is the commissioner mentioned about <clears throat> how we have a lot of assets. You saw ESU, you saw K-9, you saw all these different things that we have, the million, million dollars worth of, of tools and equipment that we have. The most important thing that we have in this police department and what makes it the greatest police department in the country are the men and women that work here. These, these men and women, these men and women here, and hopefully you in the future. So God bless you all. God bless the Yonkers Police Department, and hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And now we'll have the oath of office that will be given by Mayor Mike Spano. Thank you, and uh, it's good to see everyone here this afternoon. It's certainly good to be here with the council, and we have uh, the council president, uh, Lakeisha Collins Bellamy, who's with us. Uh, we have uh, the majority leader, Tasha Diaz, who's with us. Uh, we have the councilman from the first district, uh, Shanae Williams. Uh, we have the minority leader of the city council, Mike Breen. Uh, and of course, we have Assemblyman Nader Sage. Uh, we have uh, uh, the county legislator, Tubiello, who's with us. I thought I saw uh, Jimmy Nolan. Yeah, okay, Jimmy Nolan. It's hard to miss. Uh, come in. And uh, this is a, a real fun event. It really is. You know, uh, coming from a family where I have a lot um, of individuals in my family, four of my brothers, um, or three of my brothers rather, uh, police officers, two in-laws uh, were police officers. And I, I remember when my brother Lenny first became a police officer and how excited he was and how you know, he started his time uh, le learning 
going to school and uh, wearing his grays and, and they gave him a badge, but then they didn't even give him a gun, but he wanted his gun. He wanted his gun fast, and, but you know, everything was moved very, very slowly. And he, was, uh, he earned the ability to carry that gun. Uh, and then of course, did uh, over 20 years uh, in, in law enforcement, just like uh, some of my other brothers and some of my, uh, some of my nephews. Uh, it's a really important job that has a tremendous amount of responsibility. And, uh, you know, so with that responsibility, with that great power comes, right, comes a lot of responsibility. And you're held to a very high standard. The police officers in Yonkers are held to a standard so that uh, if there's abuse of power, they will be held accountable. Now we're very, very lucky because we have a great department. We have a department that uh, truly respects the people that they're sworn to serve and protect. Uh, and we have individuals in Yonkers who go out there every day to work hard uh, for the residents of our city. And I, along with the members of the city council, we're able to go out there and do the things we want to do, which is uh, to make the investment to make sure that there's a good contract for uh, PBA. And yes, one for CLSA at some point, um, but definitely a good contract uh, for our police unions. And, and to make sure that, uh, that we don't just put in place contracts, but that your, our officers have the finest training, the finest equipment, uh, and you can't get that unless you have a city council that is committed. And the city council is very much committed to our police department. Uh, and that allows for that synergy to take place so that our city can be named one of the safest cities of its size in all of America. So be proud of who you are, be proud of where you're from, uh, be proud of the training you got, because this really is the beginning of something. You know, uh, you, you think, wow, where might this go? Uh, it can take you a hundred different directions. But what's the beauty of the whole thing is that you're actually heading somewhere and you're doing so and clearly you're making people in your own families so very, very proud of you. You're making me, members of the council, we're all very, very proud of you. Keep up the great work and, uh, and I'll uh, do the soaring in. But uh, real quick to um, Officer Bess, uh, thank you for your service. And I know that, uh, like I said, it's, um, uh, you, you, you're a representative of the veterans like yourself and the commissioner and the other veterans that serve in the Yonkers Police Department, uh, people who've served our country and now have come here uh, to continue their service. And of course, uh, LeShannon, you've done a great job as always, and, uh, and you always have held yourself to the highest standard, and you clearly see that in your cadets. So thank you for all that you do, and uh, we'll, we'll do your swearing in. Cadets, point your feet. Okay. Ask that you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, insert your name, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York and the Charter of the City of Yonkers and that I'll faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Yonkers Police Cadet to the best of my ability, so I'll be God. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Cadets, take your seat. Before we um, distribute the certificates and the awards that we mentioned earlier, um, I'd like to recognize two of our cadet sergeants. Uh, Derek De Jesus is an existing cadet sergeant. He's been with our unit for almost four years now three years now. Um, he is also on his way into the U.S. Army. 
He will be graduating this year. We will miss him. Um, He made that decision after his uh, last experience, his final year in our, here in our program. Um, so to the mayor's point, I, I too want to say thank you, Officer Best, for your service, because um, his presence alone has encouraged so many of our youth to think of the armed forces as an option. Um, and today, we elevate from the position of cadet to Cadet Sergeant Diana Martinez. Uh, Diana is a student at John Jay College. She will graduate early. Uh, she will be taking our next, our next police exam. She also has been with us for about two years, three years. Um, she's always been extremely helpful, and it's our honor to have you, Diana. We thank you so much. <laughs> And so, without further ado, we will start with the distribution of uh, the certificates. First, from Iona Prep, Joseph Sullivan. Riverside High School, Fallon Jenkins Bonez. Next, from Lincoln High School, Kevin Hernandez. Next, from Barack Obama School for Social Justice, Itzel Torres. Next, from Yonkers High School, Monet St. Anne. Next, from Riverside High School, Jean Valdez. Next, from my alma mater, Alexandria Daly. from Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Next, from Saunders High School, Yesenia Salas. From the Charter School of Excellence, Maximiliano Martinez. Also from the Charter School of Excellence, Haji Maboub. <laughs> 
from Yonkers High School, Angel Moriel. From Gorton High School, Ilyeti Orlana. And last but not least, from Gorton High School, Familia Reynoso. We want to thank everyone who showed up today for our youth. It is so, so important that we show up for them um, in ways like this, that we show them that what they're doing is positive and important and uh, respected by the adults in their lives. These youth represent all of Yonkers, from as far northwest as the Haston borders to as far southwest as the Bronx border, as far east as Mount Vernon, East Chester, and Scarsdale. We are from every corner of the city. Um, so we just want to uh, thank all the parents who showed up. Thank you to all our distinguished members who showed up. We know you have busy days and we appreciate you making time for us today. Cadets, on your feet. Cadets, what do we do? Congratulations. <laughs>